thanks very much, Christian. Uh, I appreciate the uh, introduction and the slot, the set up for this meeting. It's very good to have the opportunity to talk to you today. Uh, I'm a civil engineer with a 40 years of experience uh, working in er the area of earth dams as well as concrete dams and other structures with a particular focus on structures, earth dams that retain waste materials and evaluating their structural uh, capabilities. Uh, our firm, Dapolonia Engineering, is located in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. And uh, we're uh, under uh, restrictive activity up here in Pennsylvania, so I'm talking to you from my home. Uh, Christian, uh, the video and I mean the audio, okay? Yeah, Bob, I'm hearing you great. Thank you. Our presentation this afternoon uh, will highlight uh, the items on the screen here. Uh, we'll first talk briefly about uh, document review, a little bit on the focus of the independent review on structural integrity and the site conditions. And then we'll get into some of the physical features of the closure plan, followed by the structural integrity criteria and some of the findings from the review and wrap up with a brief summary and some of our recommendations. As you can see, I've built in a couple of locations to pause for questions uh, in order to, to try and address things as they come up in different parts of the presentation. The uh, documents that were available for review included public documents on the closure plan for the ash pond from 2019 along with the uh, design drawings uh, for the closure plan a separate document on uh, the pond dewatering plan that describes how and uh, generally the process and treatment of water that's removed from the ash pond Additionally, uh, another public document that was valuable from the standpoint of uh, the current facility condition is the 2018 permit application for the uh, plant berry surface impoundment that really included uh, some of the information on the facility as a retain water retaining structure. Uh, finally, uh, and then very importantly, there were a number of documents that were provided on exploration, testing, and engineering uh, support analysis uh, for the closure plan. And these were documents prepared by the engineering firms that were uh, doing these particular tasks for Alabama Power. And these are not public documents. The focus of the review on structural integrity is, is really to look at aspects of the plan that provide for the safe uh, operation and, and closure and long-term uh, conditions of the ash facility when it's no longer an impounding structure. And uh, federal and state regulations provide uh, a set of criteria that are generally looked at when looking at, when considering structural integrity that are listed here. Uh, the uh, in a couple of important ones uh, that some may not think of immediately with respect to structural integrity are, are hazard potential classification and emergency action plan. And the hazard potential classification is a uh, reflection of what kind of uh, potential impact could failure of a facility like this have uh, 
should such a failure occur. It's not a reflection of the condition or the imminent threat of the, the facility. It's more just what could be the impact. And generally it's uh, classified as low, significant, and high hazard potential. Uh, as a surface impoundment, plant berries ash pond is classified in the significant category. What that means is there could be significant downstream and adjacent impacts, uh, certainly to the waterways, to potential environmental conditions. Uh, what is uh, not included in the significant hazard classification, but rather would kick it up into a high hazard classification is if there were probable loss of life. So uh, what the hazard potential classification also does is it establishes certain design criteria as well as the need for an emergency action plan. And the emergency action plan is, is a document uh, that provides for notification for uh, response to emergencies uh, should they come up and working with emergency management agencies to address those kinds of emergencies. Other aspects of the integrity review include structural stability assessments and then the operation and maintenance plans and inspections that are done to confirm that aspects of uh, the design for these facilities are being maintained or being installed and maintained as well as periodic inspections conducted. Uh, from the standpoint of site conditions, the aerial photograph uh, illustrates the plant berry location and adjacent ash pond. And as you undoubtedly are aware, the Mobile River uh, circles around the ash pond on the uh, eastern side, and the cooling water canal is located on more of the western side. Uh, the grass dashed green line shows the relative limits of the ash pond in its surface impoundment configuration and represents a little under 600 acres. Uh, a couple of, of key things here to uh, comment on are that the ash material, the fly ash and bottom ash contained within the pond is generally saturated and of a loose consistency. The ash material is the ash material is also uh, contain, contained by an extensive perimeter dike foundation that sits on clay. Underlying the ash pond is a sequence of clay and sand layers, and within the sand layer is a semi-confined aquifer that discharges to the Mobile River. Moving on to the closure plan uh, itself, the overall concept of the closure plan is to consolidate the ash material and reduce into a reduced footprint of about 330 acres, more in the north central portion of the site as represented by that gray area that includes elevation contours creating a bit of a pile that, that rises above the current grade. That consolidation of ash uh, results from the removal of materials along the perimeters to create a, a buffer and an area for uh, containment structures and stormwater management. At the south end of the site, in addition to the uh, uh, at the south of the of end of the site, in addition to the stormwater ponds constructed right adjacent to the consolidated footprint is a stormwater settling basin that will be maintained along with the 
NPDES outfall at the very end of the site, south end of the site. Uh, the, follow, the items on the left side are generally the elements of the closure plan and we'll be going over those. First, just to uh, try and help visualize things with a cross section across the site. Whereas you can see the Mobile River is on the right and that cooling water discharge canal is on the left. The foundations as mentioned generally consist of uh, clay and sand units. And then uh, as you might see adjacent to the waterways, the existing perimeter dikes are located uh, and contain the current existing CCR. In this particular cross section, uh, it shows the removal of the ash material immediately adjacent to the perimeter dikes and the development of the consolidated footprint and the additional CCR fill in a lighter gray tone shown in the center of the cross section. One thing to note is that this cross section includes a vertical scale exaggeration of 10 times. Uh, so it makes the slopes look uh, quite a bit steeper than what they actually are. Some of the later cross sections we'll show are more natural scale. So it gives a better illustration of, of what things look like. Uh, the first element in the closure plan is dewatering and stabilization. And initially, uh, the free water will be uh, removed from the surface of the ash pond, and an effort will be made to reduce the amount of interstitial water within the ash material itself by pumping from open pooled areas and by creating sumps in the ash material and pumping from those. This water is considered contact water having been in contact with the ash material and it will pass through a filter berm to reduce solids content and then be pumped for treatment before discharge. The dewatering will continue throughout the closure process and it contributes to stabilization of the ash material uh, particularly as we as it is it is advanced into the excavation and removal of the ash material. There are other stabilization measures incorporated into the plan that follow in a sequential fashion. One is preloading of the areas before CCR removal. Uh, what that is is to place a uh, fill material. Uh, over top of the ash material in order to begin to uh, get consolidation and loading on those areas, not just for the ash material, but particularly for the underlying clay layer, which will improve its characteristics as the ash material is removed and before construction of some of the containment structures. Additionally, a bridging lift uh, may be placed over some wet or soft grade areas to allow equipment access. The bridging lift is just a drier material that uh, would allow uh, equipment to, to track over it. And the bridging lift material would be removed as the uh, ash is excavated. Finally, uh, an additional uh, element is the pressure use of temporary pressure relief wells within the foundation's sand sublayer, and we'll see a little bit of how those operate here in one of the next slides. Uh, this slide is intended to show some of the excavation process for uh, the removal of the ash, and the upper cross section illustrates what conditions look like before the uh, removal of ash material adjacent to one of the perimeter dikes. Uh, what I just want to point out is that uh, under the generally con current conditions, there's a fairly elevated water table in the existing ash material shown as that upper blue line and, and called out in the upper cross section. Uh, 
another aspect that's important from the standpoint of, of the closure plan is the presence of a semi-confined aquifer in the sand in the bottom of this cross section and generally groundwater flow that travels towards the Mobile River. Uh, as noted in one of the uh, labels for uh, the lower blue line, the groundwater potentiometric level in the sand is reflective of the pressure of the groundwater in the sand itself. As uh, excavation uh, following, uh, following uh, the preloading program as discussed previously, a geotechnical exploration is planned uh, to confirm that some of the improvements for, from the preloading uh, are being seen, particularly in that uh, shallow clay layer immediately beneath the ash material. Uh, sequential excavation would, uh, would be performed with continuing dewatering and the use of bridging lift, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, as the excavation proceeds closer down to the clay layer and getting down in an area near the bottom of the ash, uh, temporary pressure relief wells would be installed. And that's the illustration shown in the bottom cross section on this slide. Basically, the pressure relief wells allow for pumping of water within this sand zone that helps pull down that potentiometric surface uh, below the level of the clay. And that facilitates some of the oper excavation and operation of construction equipment as part of the closure uh, operation and removal of the ash material. One thing that's also be ac being accomplished as shown in these two cross sections is the water table decline uh, with interstitial drainage from the ash material. Basically, the uh, ash is draining towards either sumps or deepened excavation areas. And so we see in this uh, illustration a decline in that water table. Continuing on, uh, an important element of the uh, closure plan is removal verification that uh, the ash has been removed from areas where excavation is deemed complete. And basically that the ash clay interface uh, for the pond has been established prior to excavation through design exploration borings that have already been conducted. Additionally, uh, uh, more exploration borings and sampling is planned uh, with on 300 foot centers uh, that will also be used for uh, consideration of how effective the preloading activities were. But that information will also give us additional data on that ash clay interface. And then supplementing that is cone penetration tests that are performed uh, through the ash and into the uh, underlying clay layer and uh, that interface will also be detected based on penetration resistance and pore pressure measurements. Then uh, with excavation, uh, it's planned for the excavation of the ash to continue and extend six inches into the underlying clay and that will be guided by, by GPS equipment and would be performed under a construction quality control monitoring plan. Finally, upon achieving uh, CCR removal and get, uh, attaining the excavation grades, the subgrade uh, will be sampled for visual classification at a frequency of about one sample per acre or on about a 200 foot grid. With uh, continued ash excavation, uh, particularly along the perimeters as shown in this graphic, 
the soil containment berm would be constructed and some of the uh, base for the stormwater ponds collecting at the perimeter of the site would be constructed as well. Uh, the uh, soil containment berm uh, provides, is, includes an internal drainage system on the interior slope that would be used to collect interstitial water that would come from the ash material. Uh, in this graphic, in this cross section, it's material on the left side of the cross section. What's shown in the lighter gray on the left side of the cross section is uh, ash material that's been excavated and then it would fill in behind this soil containment berm. The closure cover system is another critical element for the uh, closure plan. And the design basis for the closure uh, cover system is summarized there on the right side. The uh, type of cover system includes a engineered synthetic turf and a geomembrane with a drainage media. And what that uh, combination will do is to uh, effectively limit infiltration into the ash material. It will, with the grades established on the cover, preclude impounding probability and the selection of a textured membrane provides for uh, slope stability on the, uh, on the cover itself. This type of system is intended to minimize uh, further maintenance and also can be uh, installed expeditiously. The final element uh, that I'm, we'll be discussing on the closure plan is surface water and stormwater management. And uh, during the implementation of closure, of the closure plan, contact water will be collected and treated and storm water from events uh, less than the 25 year storm retained and treated. Additionally, uh, for storm events exceeding the 25 year uh, event, it, the runoff would be discharged through the NPDES outfall at the uh, south end of the site uh, and it's an anticipated that the effluent limits would be met under those conditions. With completion of the uh, closure plan, the final grades established for the consolidated ash uh, area, footprint area of three and a half percent with the use of synthetic turf and line channels and flow energy dissipators, uh, dissipation structures will provide for erosion control overall on the facility. Additionally, the stormwater settling basin at the south end is being maintained such that stormwater collected uh, along the perimeters in the perimeter ponds will be channeled down to the south settling basin and ultimately released in accordance with the stormwater management requirements. Uh, with that, I was going to take a pause for questions uh, on the uh, closure plan and some of the physical features. All right, does anybody, anybody have any questions? Kristen? Yes. Mayor McMillan, we're planning for 25 year events and we typically get those about every week during the rainy season. Is there a reason why it's not stepped up to a higher level?
thank you for the, the question. Uh, as I understand it, it the uh, 25 year storm event is uh, the question and that those seem to occur quite frequently and I can appreciate that. Uh, the uh, 25 year storm event is a regulatory requirement. Uh, the 25 year storm event in this case is for water uh, retention and treatment. And that uh, with smaller storm events, it's important to be able to retain the water and to treat to meet the effluent standards uh, of the contact water, water that's in contact with the uh, gas material. For storm events that are larger than 25 year, and I can appreciate that those seem to come pretty often too. Uh, what's been found and what is expected in this case is that uh, with the increased size of storm events, uh, the effluent <coughs> limit in the NPDS can frequently be met without, the, without necessary treatment. So th this is somewhat of a regulatory driven uh, uh, parameter in terms of the size of the storm event, uh, as opposed to it, it uh, being more of a design parameter. Uh, the, uh, it's important to note that the stormwater channels, as well as the uh, overall capacity of the stormwater system without uh, overtopping is sized considerably size or larger size. And uh, it looks at uh, up to the 1000 year event uh, to avoid overtopping. The next section of the presentation is a, a discussion of the structural integrity review criteria that were uh, focused on for this uh, independent review. We have talked about uh, these specific items that are part of the criteria. And so we'll progress on to the first one, the hazard potential classification and emergency action plan. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the ash pond has been classified as a significant hazard potential structure, and that establishes the inflow design flood requirements. Uh, and it's important to note that that inflow design flood requirement is retained as a design requirement throughout closure. So uh, this 1,000 year uh, storm event that I just mentioned is the inflow design requirement that must be evaluated uh, for the closure plan design. Also, as I mentioned, uh, an emergency action plan has been prepared for the site and uh, that will also be maintained uh, through closure and would be maintained uh, until a reduction in the hazard potential classification is, uh, is ultimately uh, decided. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the reduction in hazard potential classification in a subsequent slide. Finally, uh, at the south end of the site, the stormwater settling basin is planned uh, to be maintained even with the facility under closure, although it will be converted from a, a pond that contains quite a bit of water to one where the pool level in the settling basin will be maintained at a pretty low level, pretty near the ground surface, except for when there are storm events. It's important to mention that. Hey, hey Bob? Yes. Hey, I just want to make sure everybody's aware of, of, of the chat feature. If you, if you click on that chat box down there and y'all can feed, uh, feed me questions and I can relay them to Bob, it might make it a little bit easier that way if um, instead of waiting or if, if y'all are having issues uh, trying to get them out or 
don't 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 hesitate to to go ahead and use that chat box. Go ahead, Bob. Sure. The, uh, I think we're ready to progress. The, the last thing I was taught, mentioning about were, was the uh, uh, stormwater settling basin at the south end of the site. And under the closure plan, it's intended to be maintained. So that would play into uh, any decision on changing the hazard potential classification of the site itself. From the standpoint of structural stability, uh, we'll be looking at slope stability, settlement, slope protection, and stormwater management. With respect to slope stability, the facility components were analyzed for the stability cases and compared to minimum factors of safety. And uh, you see the list of facility components that were evaluated on the left side. And then a, a uh, table of stability cases on the right side of the slide. The uh, minimum factor of safety criteria are uh, safety requirements that are established under federal or, and state regulation or under uh, uh, industry guidance uh, for different kinds of stability cases. For instance, uh, a factor safety of 1.5 represents a measure of stability where the forces resisting failure are one and a half times greater than those that promote failure. So it, it's a a measure of regulatory criteria that is to be met in looking at the safety of these various components uh, of the closure plan. Uh, the various stability cases look at a variety of loading conditions as well as uh, conditions that might exist in the foundation materials or as a result of uh, adjacent uh, seepage or flooding. In terms of some of the findings uh, from the slope stability review, uh, the stability analysis indicate acceptable structural integrity and performance and really focused on the critical areas along the east, south, and west perimeters. These critical areas uh, were established based significantly on the foundation conditions, which vary to some degree underneath different parts of the facility. Some of the foundation materials may represent weaker conditions, so those tend to dominate and, and direct the analyses to those more critical locations. In other locations, some of the configuration of the uh, closure plan, uh, the, the consolidated footprint might uh, direct uh, the uh, critical locations and, and make sure uh, areas that are most critical that might impose the most stress and consequently represent the most concern from a factor safety are looked at. Uh, one of the things that uh, was apparent that in, in the slope stability evaluation was that uh, the focus was principally in the area of the consolidated CCR footprint in the center portion of the site in the northwest corner, the storage yard uh, did not include the, the engineering analyses for the closure plan, did not include analyses for that area. One thing that while the area doesn't represent as uh, steep a grade as the consolidated footprint, and generally the overall elevation is quite a bit lower, 
uh, that area does not include the removal of ash material adjacent the perimeter dike, and it does not include the uh, internal drainage system. Consequently, uh, one of our recommendations is to look into that more from the standpoint of est establishing its performance and confirming acceptable factors of safety that so that in looking at future conditions, looking at monitoring conditions as this area takes shape, uh, the expected performance is established. Another uh, slope stability finding uh, relates to the uh, importance of dewatering and stabilization of the ash pond uh, materials with uh, to remove the interstitial uh, drainage from the ash material, uh, particularly uh, as it relates to uh, progressive excavation of ash. Uh, it's a, it, it will be important that that water table decline with the excavation and with the operation of sumps to remove water from the ash bond in order to meet some of the design uh, assumptions for the sequential excavation of ash material. Consequently, uh, one of our recommendations is that geotechnical exploration, instrumentation, and monitoring be per performed so that the design basis can be confirmed as work proceeds. The next uh, element uh, to be discussed is settlement and the construction grades that were are established for the closure plan consider long-term settlement so that the, the cover and the stormwater control st structures will continue to operate. Uh, the settlement analysis and mitigation measures were, were appropriately based on design exploration and testing uh, that was has already been done. Considering dewatering and stabilization measures that will uh, provide for uh, initiation of settlement activity. The preloading program to initiate consolidation and, and settlement in the underlying foundation clay. And finally, a geotechnical exploration that's focused on confirming foundation characteristics. From the standpoint of stormwater management and flood overtopping protection, uh, this slide uh, illustrates the uh, design conditions considered for site storm water runoff where contact water retention and treatment for up to the 25 year storm is called for. Uh, discharge through the NPDES outfall for storms greater than the 25 year event. And overtopping protection is provided uh, for the perimeter dikes for storms greater than the thousand year event. Uh, flood frequency analyses were also evaluated for the Mobile River to look at overtopping protection of the perimeter dikes from the standpoint of river floods. And the flood frequency analysis indicated that uh, the perimeter dikes would not be overtopped uh, for events uh, up to and exceeding the thousand year event. Additionally, uh, coastal storm surge evaluations were performed for the uh, site and uh, looked at uh, available information from uh, coastal storm studies, extending that information up to the site and determine that for coastal storm surges, overtopping protection of the perimeter dikes is much greater than the thousand year event. And that, that demonstrates that it's really uh, river floods from the Mobile River that are more critical for this site. Uh, 
Uh, one of the concerns uh, from a structural integrity standpoint is slope protection. And uh, the cover system and some of the provisions for stormwater channels and ponds include uh, appropriate erosion protection for those facilities. For the perimeter dikes, particularly the exterior of the perimeter dikes, uh, the existing vegetation is uh, assumed to provide adequate erosion protection. Uh, certainly under normal conditions, uh, the vegetation can be expected to, to provide adequate uh, protection for the slopes. Uh, but under extreme river flooding, uh, there is some question as to the potential for extra erosion of the exterior perimeter dikes. And thus, uh, we are recommending that that be evaluated for such extreme river flooding events, and if necessary, uh, slope protection considered. Moving on, on, the operation and maintenance plan includes a number of provisions uh, for implementation of the closure plan and for maintenance of the closure structures. Uh, hey, Bob. Yes. I've got, I've got a question. Um, we had a, had a question in regards to the flood analysis. Um, if you could speak to what flood maps were evaluated and um, the existing maps or the Mobile County maps, uh, basically what maps were used and do you know the date or are they, are they current? Yeah, they, that's correct. The current, current mapping was used. Uh, it, it was either the 2015 or 2018 studies, but I believe they are very current. Uh, I'd have to look up the actual dates of those references. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Rega regarding operation and maintenance plan, uh, what I wanted to point out about the operation and maintenance plan information is that it, it includes a record keeping section as well as uh, information on uh, procedures for updating plans and assessments. And uh, this is important uh, from the standpoint of the public being aware of changes that come up and aware of updates to periodic structural assessments and inspections that are performed and disclosed. Uh, consequently, uh, we wanted to point out in a recommendation that uh, monitoring of disclosed public records uh, really provide an opportunity for public awareness of significant closure plan changes, and that that would also provide an opportunity uh, for updates of structural assessments uh, in that these are done periodically during the closure plan and would provide a, uh, a chance to, for the public to be able to see information that's generated on uh, the progress of the work as well as on the, uh, any uh, update, any required update on structural assessments. The final uh, review criterion uh, for structural integrity was inspections and the closure plan calls for weekly inspections and to look for the appearance of structural weakness or uh, concern relative to operation of any of the outlet structures. Then annual inspections are also required by a qualified professional engineer and an annual inspection report is required to document the geometry of the facility and the closure progress, along with instrumentation information 
and changes that may affect the operation or stability and particularly any appearances of an actual or potential structural weakness. We wanted to point out that uh, the inspection reports are also a, a uh, project record that would be disclosed. And so it's important that that, that information be monitored and reviewed because that is another uh, uh, avenue of, of information or review for the uh, uh, status of the closure operation and any conditions that may be arising that might be a concern from the standpoint of structural integrity. Uh, the inspection report should contain geotechnical instrumentation, monitoring, and importantly, interpretation, and also should contain inspection observations that uh, support any uh, conclusions regarding structural assessment. Well, the final portion of the presentation relates to uh, really the summary and recommendations just to uh, summarize and, and restate some of the things that I mentioned during the uh, presentation. The, uh, our independent review indicates that acceptable structural integrity and performance is demonstrated by the closure plan procedures design and engineering analyses. In my professional opinion, the structural integrity criteria have been met, and in some cases the criteria are surpassed, providing confidence in the closure plan. Recommendations have been prepared for Alabama Power that include supplemental analyses, exploration, instrumentation, and monitoring programs. And recommendations have also been prepared for the Mobile Bay National Estuary Program relative to continuing review and monitoring of publicly disclosed project information during and after plan implementation. Uh, in terms of uh, the structural assessment recommendations, and these are for Alabama Power, uh, analyze the stability and establish structural performance of the storage yard in the northwest corner of the site. Supplement post dewatering and preloading geotechnical exploration that is currently planned with ash saturation and shear strength characterization. Uh, in this regard, the Geotechnical exploration that was planned was focused on the underlying clay, and we are recommending that they also include looking at ash saturation and shear strength. And additionally, uh, incorporate geotechnical instrumentation and monitoring program into the closure plan so that the material conditions poor pressures, other features of the, uh, of the uh, site are monitored as part of the ongoing work to confirm that the design criteria and the design assumptions are being met. From the standpoint of slope protection recommendation for Alabama Power, we are recommending that uh, the potential for erosion of the exterior perimeter dikes due to extreme mobile, ri mobile river flooding be considered and that slope protection reviewed if warranted. Hey, Bob. Yes. I got, a, I got another question for you. Um, can you just elaborate a little bit on characterization of the shear strength and maybe talk about um, is that in relation to to the ash and will that ash consolidate and, and become more compacted? 
Yes, uh, that, I'm glad to thank you for the question. Uh, the, uh, there are two things that uh, we want to see in terms of the ash material. Uh, one is saturation and what it want, and another is the shear strength of the material uh, as the ash dewaters. Uh, what is anticipated is that with the removal of the ponded water and then as sumps are developed and interstitial water is drained from the ash, the level of saturation will decline uh, in the uh, in situ ash materials in, in the areas beyond the limits of the excavation. Uh, that's important in terms of uh, assuring that the material is well drained and that it's consolidating and strength is improving. Uh, that's a particular concern with respect to the excavation sequencing and development of cut slopes in the ash because uh, it would be uh, important that the ash may provide the shear strength that's anticipated uh, with draining in order to sustain the kinds of cut slopes that are planned to sequentially remove ash material and ultimately uh, achieve the consolidated configuration. So uh, I hope that uh, addresses the, the question on the shear, the saturation and shear strength of the ash material uh, in cut slopes and then within the consolidated ash area. I think the final comment you made, Christian, was will the ash uh, consolidate and increase in strength? And uh, it's expected that the ash will consolidate with, with uh, dewatering and that uh, there will be improved strength characteristics, uh, certainly in a dewatered state. All right, thank you, Bob. Um, why don't you go ahead? I think I was uh, summarizing uh, for a recommendation for Alabama Power to evaluate the potential for erosion of the exterior perimeter dikes uh, under extreme Mobile River flooding. Uh, ad additionally, uh, for Alabama Power, the, uh, it's recommended under the category of hazard potential classification and emergency action plans that uh, they pursue reevaluation of the hazard potential classification upon completion of the closure plan. In that, uh, with the watering of the ash, the material will be. Uh, denser and represent a uh, more of a, a non-flowable condition. And I think it will show that uh, by reevaluating the hazard potential classification, the ash material will not contribute to the hazard potential uh, in that the ash material can be shown that it is not flowable and that that will demonstrate risk reduction for the facility. The other uh, recommendation here is uh, for continuing the maintenance of the emergency action plan and as well as the annual uh, reviews and scheduling of meetings with emergency management agencies concerning the scope and responsibilities of the parties, and particularly uh, documenting the meeting participation, the topics reviewed and training, 
or exercise activities. Uh, this would be uh, part of, would continue throughout the period of the closure plan and would be a requirement until the uh, uh, hazard potential classification was changed. Hey, Bob, I think building off that last question, the, the, um, the, the ash as it con consolidates, it's going to be, would it be less susceptible to erosion? Well, it may be less susceptible to erosion, but uh, I guess I'm maybe not appreciating the question in that uh, as the ash dewaters and it consolidates, it will also be covered and protected from surface water. So it would be, uh, it would include a protective covering and, and the action of surface water to erode the ash should be uh, precluded. I, I think maybe the, the question was getting at if, if this is not right, um, feel free to, to shoot it to me again. Um, once the ash is consolidated, if, if there were to be a breach in the levee at that point, would it make it less likely to, to erode or I guess flow out of, of a breach? Well, I, I'm glad you uh, clarified that. It, that is uh, an important aspect of the closure plan in that by dewatering it, it will consolidate and that will make it uh, less likely and hopefully they will, as recommended, they can reevaluate the hazard potential classification, show that the, the ash material would not represent a flowable material, and then uh, be able to reduce the hazard classification uh, to either low hazard or not be governed by a hazard potential classification. Okay, and we had, I've, I've got another one that, that's come in now. Um, uh, the question relates to uh, looking at, in terms of long-term environmental safety, does, does the cap and place method, um, how does it compare to say um, excavation and removal? Well, I, I think it's uh, a, there are such different uh, approaches that uh, it's hard to compare them. Uh, I think that excavation and removal allows the opportunity to uh, manipulate the ash material uh, and place it within a confined area that gives a great deal of control over the management of the material. It also presumes that all of the, uh, the, the new site where the excavated material is placed would be uh, meet all of the requirements of the of the regulations. Uh, the close in place approach includes a number of uh, design criteria that are provided in order to establish a safe and secure uh, and and pro provide for structural integrity of the long-term confinement of the material. So I guess uh, my response is that I don't see them particularly comparable in terms of one is better or one is not as good as much as there are
conditions to be checked and evaluated and, and satisfied for each. Yeah, and let me just say, I know that's kind of hard for you to answer. Bob, Bob was only tasked with uh, reviewing the scope of, of Alabama Power's closure plan. So um, it's kind of hard to relate that to a plan that doesn't exist. But I think the, uh, the, the question, the, the, the person was just asking, I guess, based on, on your knowledge, what, you know, just speaking in generalities, based on what you've seen uh, with Alabama's closure plans to what, if you know about any previous attempts for, for the other method for, for removal. But I, I think you, you did an adequate job. I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of what, what the scope of your, your work was. One of the, the challenging things with uh, excavation and removal is the significant quantities of material that need to be managed and the risks associated with having to move large volumes of material, whether it's from spills or airborne uh, dust or, or other things uh, that can play, can be uh, significant risks uh, as compared to keeping it consolidated on site. Uh, I think that's good, Bob. We can go ahead. The, uh, just to wrap things up, uh, I did uh, have some recommendations for Mobile Bay National Estuary Program in that uh, some of these documents, so, some of the reporting that's going to occur with closure will be public project records. And so it gives the public the opportunity to review uh, the progress of the work and information on periodic structural assessments or, or other information that's useful to, uh, to be aware of and that can help uh, identify problems that come up and also help to uh, assure the public that uh, the closure operation is, is providing, uh, is proceeding according to the plan and that in terms of structural integrity, uh, meeting its objectives. Uh, for, for initially, well, I'm recommending that the, that the project records be monitored uh, so that you're aware of closure plan updates, periodical, periodic structural assessments that are done and inspections that are completed. Uh, to check on the progress and confirm conditions. I'm recommending inspection report reviews uh, in that, that those will disclose geotechnical information, instrumentation, monitoring and interpretation, and along with any inspection observations that would support structural assessment. And then finally, uh, to uh, check that the emergency action plan is updated as conditions change with closure implementation and that scheduled meetings are conducted with the emergency management agencies. Uh, usually the, there, are, there is documentation of these meetings and it should include the participants, the topics reviewed, and the training or exercise activities uh, conducted. I believe that uh, completes what I had in mind to present. And uh, if you're receiving more questions or if there's comments that uh, 
the attendees want to make, uh, I am certainly available.